This is the Gen Z E102 for 2015. It's one of the more affordable electric bikes I've seen, but fairly versatile. It comes in a couple of different sizes, 16 and 18 inch frame. This is the step through version. It's got these like kind of swept back, relaxed pedals, that are <laughs> pedals, um, handlebar up here that's real easy to reach and it kind of gives you that upright viewpoint when you're riding around. I kind of like it. I've, I've reviewed the Faraday Porter and this has a very similar feel to that when you're riding. Now that said, it is a little bit, uh, a little bit different than the Porter in the sense that the hub motor is in the rear. It's a little bit weaker at 250 watts, but it's geared. And so you get uh, lightweight, but with a little bit more get up and go. And I, I like that. And this is pretty stealthy. You can kind of see it blends in back here. The battery pack is built right into the down tube. So it balances out the, the weight on the frame. Um, that is a 36 volt, 7.8 amp hour or actually it's 8.7 amp hour battery pack so it's a little bit a little bit larger than i thought the battery is removable which is nice so you can charge it on or off the bike um, it also makes the bike a little bit lighter of course if you're transporting it that kind of thing now a lot of bikes at this price point around 1500 dollars have like a cadence sensor this is one of the few i've seen that actually has like a little strain torque sensor in there and that gives you a kind of a more fluid smoother feel when you're when you're pedaling along but it does take a little bit more energy you have to you have to push you have to kind of activate it now, if you're not in to that this also has a twist throttle the twist throttle can be activated when you're in zero but there are five levels of assist and as they get progressively higher of course you get more power drains the battery quicker but it's going to be better for climbing that kind of thing and of course you're going to save save some of your capacity extend your range when you're using uh, pedal assist like that so let me hit some of the other specs i've got a seven speed shimano SIS index shifter. This is nice for, you know, if you're wearing gloves or something, it's pretty big and easy to reach, but it's not quite as uh, seamless as something that's like a trigger shifter down here that's a little bit, um, you know, for higher end mountain bikes and stuff. For something like this, that makes sense. I, I like the display quite a bit, and they've also broken out the button pad right here so you can reach that without taking your hand off the grip. Um, which is just kind of a safety feature. I really like that. The brake levers as well. They've got, of course, mechanical for the brakes themselves and uh, a little electronic cutoff sensor. So anytime you pull that, whether you're in pedal assist or not, it's gonna make sure the, mo the motor's off for safety. And the front rotor I noticed is 160 millimeter. Looks like the back might be um, 180 or maybe even 200 millimeter. It's kind of a custom rotor. I don't think rotors, you know, wear out very quickly. It's usually the brake pads, but just keep that in mind. This one's a little bit larger back here and kind of a unique setup um, that they've got going. Seats pretty soft and plush. I like that. There is not a suspension fork on this one, which saves weight, but uh, you're relying on the tires and the saddle to give you a little bit more cushion. I was trying to figure out the size of the tires here real quick. It looks like 26 by 1.75. So 20, 26, that's pretty standard, sort of traditional wheel size. And these are just, you know, kind of generic um, in terms of uh, the build quality. The kickstand is double-legged, which is kind of nice. Gives this a good upright parking position. And overall, the bike just, it isn't it isn't that heavy. It's just, you know, it's, it's solid. Like, it's a bike, right? Um, excellent, excellent. Uh, Excellent for riding around town and parking at a rack and you know, pretty durable that way. We took the battery at, out earlier and that was really easy. There's a key slot over here. You do not have to leave the key in when riding, which is awesome. That's not something I love to do because it kind of bangs around. So you can pull that out. I'm gonna leave it in today though, so we don't lose it. Press the power button over there. It activates the display. We've got your speed, pedal assist level. I'm gonna start in zero so I can use the throttle. And then we've got the battery capacity right here, as well as trip distance, odometer. Um, it's a nice display and it is, it sort of swivels, you know, as long as you don't over tighten it. And that's great for, you know, on a sunny day, you don't want to have this glaring back in your eye, but it's not removable. So just keep that in mind for, for a bike that is a little bit cheaper, you know, it's something that you might not feel so bad parking outside or using at school. Having a big, nice display like this is sort of like, ah, uh, you don't want someone to, to mess with that. Um, and of course, if you store your battery inside where it's a little bit more neutral temperatures, that's gonna last longer. Um, so keep that in mind as well. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, introduce you to the team uh, that's working for Gen Z. These guys are in the Bay Area and uh, they're working with, with a company that's bringing these sort of like to the masses is the idea. So Yasim and Alex, how's it going guys? It's good, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. We got helicopters flying over. I mean, a lot of coverage today on this thing. <laughs> so can you give me just like the two minute overview on Gen Z and what you guys are offering? Absolutely, yeah. We, we're an urban mobility company uh, based in, uh, in, in, in 
the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're doing is we're, is we're coming up with innovative products for people to get in and around town uh, with all their stuff. So we yeah. have an electric scooter and we also have an electric e-bike right here. Uh, what we're really aiming to do is bring the e-bike to a whole new audience. Uh, yeah. We're super excited to have the e-bike enthusiast audience, you know, uh, as equally excited as, as, about this product as we are. But we're also really looking to get more and more people out and and uh, and, and, and on our product because I think. Frankly, everybody in this community knows that if you get on an e-bike and, and you twist the throttle, you'll have a lot of fun. And yeah, you'll, you'll everyone always says, like, oh, a big smile on your face. Yeah, and it, it's true, but absolutely. it's, you know, the price point is a big issue and being able to reach people who might not have considered the $3,000 yeah. options. Of course, and historically, you know, there's been two impediments to the market, I think. You know, one one has been, you know, it's historically high price point for quality goods. Uh -huh. uh, and second, it's been service. You know, a, a lot of, a oh, lot yeah. of low-cost competitors haven't necessarily had the same you know, commitment to service that we do. And in every single market in which we sell this, you will have a physical service infrastructure to take care of your bikes um, in, in a very prompt and, and, and you know, uh, warranty manner. Uh, Our guess is that if more people realized e-bikes were so utilitarian and so fun to ride that they would actually want to bring this into their lifestyle and uh, we're taking it upon ourselves to take it around to where our consumers are and show it to uh, students and universities right. in the area and urban commuters. I and love so that. Get butts on seats. Yeah. Uh, and how much does this one weigh? Do you guys have any ideas? Because 46 pounds. 46 pounds. So, Boom. Yeah. Thank you. Because that's you key. Sub 50. You can yeah. take it on the metro. I, this bike isn't is exactly like not the right size for me. This is 16 sure, inch, yeah. it's a little small, but I'm gonna hop on it and just give it a ride and you know show off the motor and, and use the throttle and stuff to give people an idea of how it works. Thank you for, for the background. Thank you you know, it's you first so year at Interbike, so it's always fun to you know see a new company. And you said your market, so can you just where where are you launching? Where will this be? We're our, our first uh, our first couple markets are San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Portland, Oregon. Okay, um, great we'll bike be, communities. Yeah. Yes. And we'll also be accessible at, uh, at bike dealers nationwide okay. over the next uh, couple months. Excellent. Well, I'm going to hop on this thing. We're in throttle mode. Boom. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Got like a little more than half the battery. Not bad. We've almost hit 20 miles per hour. We are on flats right now. Um, so that's pretty easy for the bike and again a 250 watt motor not super powerful But it's also quiet and it kind of keeps this lightweight low cost all that kind of stuff um, Now I'm gonna arrow up to pedal assist level 5 and try to show how that works But it's it's really smooth because of the torque sensor and you do have to apply some pressure It's not quite as immediately satisfying as as the throttle Of course, at any time you can pull those brake levers up there and that's gonna cut power. Let's try this again. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I can feel it. There it is. Not bad. That's the Gen Z E102, first generation bike from these guys. Um, really interesting to hear their pitch and stuff. Uh, you know, it's a decent entry level electric bike. For the full written review on this and others, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com.